the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, a country rich with history, religion, and oil. With an estimated four million visitors to Mecca each year, Saudi Arabia is known for pilgrimage, but not so much for adventure travel. However, the newly formed Supreme Commission for Tourism is on a mission to change that. I'm Dr. Bob Arnott, medical doctor, foreign correspondent, humanitarian, thrill seeker, and some say adventure junkie. I've spent my life traveling around the world, undercover and under fire. There's a fine line between adventure and danger, a line I find and cross more than I should. This is the route out to the home of the Saudi Arabian tourism czar. They've now made this a, a new national priority. His name is Prince Sultan bin Salman bin Abdulaziz bin Saud. He was the first Muslim into space. He's an ex-fighter pilot, and he said incredibly helpful in terms of arranging adventures here in Saudi Arabia. And so, to try our luck. Please welcome to Al Adabat Farm. Unbelievable house. What's it called? Uh, Al Adabat. That's what I thought you said. Yes. Thanks. <laughs> Come in. Wow, this is amazing. Considering it took four months just to get a visa to Saudi Arabia, scoring a meeting with Prince Sultan is quite a coup. So now, Saudi Arabia to a lot of Americans is a very strange, foreign, and kind of mysterious and even potentially hostile place. Mm -hmm. How do you approach the average American to say, Come on over. We're a great tourist destination. Well, uh, in Saudi Arabia, of course, it's an open country. We've got at least six million expatriates living here, many from Europe and the United States and everywhere. Our big push now is to keep our Saudis who are leaving on holidays to gain their, their uh, acceptance for tourism in Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is composed of at least 60% people under the age of 20. They're hungry for adventures and so we've already started a lot of events. We've been all over the Middle East looking for adventures. Are there great adventures right here in, in Saudi Arabia? Of course. Just being in Saudi Arabia is an adventure. What well, is an adventure, absolutely. But beyond that, are there the more standard sort of adventures like rock climbing or diving? Yeah. I would say that you should go to Jeddah and enjoy the uh, diving in Jeddah. And then go to the south, to Asir, the mountain region, which is one of my favorite regions. Beautiful weather, even in the middle of the summer. Rock climbing? Rock climbing, mm -hmm. uh, parachuting, hang gliding. But now you're a, you're a pilot. Mm -hmm. You're an astronaut. Mm -hmm. Do you think you could line up any uh, aerial activities for us? Oh, sure. Depends how much stomach you have. but uh, Pretty good. Uh, a little weak from time to time, but well, not bad. In Saudi Arabia, we're very proud of our uh, Air Force uh, aerobatic display team. So I think we can arrange for you to go with the Hawks. And Seriously? Well, to watch them or go with them? Oh, no. If you can go with them and fly the plane. And that's something that could happen this trip? Yeah, this will happen this trip. Armed with Prince Sultan's itinerary for adventure, I set out early the next morning to explore the country. Just arrived at Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, which is probably the most fun and interesting city any place here in the country. We're going north to the beach where we will get on a boat and go do some diving and snorkeling. And we will be going out with uh, Prince Saud bin Khalid al-Faisal. I am confident that you will have one of the best times today with, right. with, with him, yes. With resorts and opulent private homes littering its coastline, Jeddah looks more like Miami Beach than the Middle East. Located on the shores of the Red Sea, Jeddah has long been the gateway to Mecca, but also serves as the seaside playground for wealthy Saudis and other visitors alike. This is His Royal Highness, Prince Saud. Hello. 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 Welcome hey. on board. Hey, thank you very much. Uh, how was your trip? It was great. It was really, it's been a great trip. Uh, are you ready for the day? Ready. Ahmad, are you ready? Yes, sir.
So we've just come from the other side of that reef to the deep side, and this is where there is uh, the wreck of the vessel. It's called an unwreck. An unwreck. Yes. What kind of a boat is it? Well, uh, I don't know what. Uh, I think it was a freighter boat. Right. Uh, but you can still. What's nice about it is you can still see the crew quarters. It's still intact. You can actually dive inside the reef. It'll be a nice dive. Anything to watch out for? I'm gonna watch out for you. <laughs> Ready? All right. Let's go. Let's go. Bob is not wearing a wetsuit, neither am I. That's because in the Red Sea, in summer, you do not need to die with a wetsuit. That is a serious looking knife. Oh, you're not on the shark's menu. Fight yeah. off the shark. Very one, two, three. You know what I love best is that no what's it? It's so comfortable. It's like being in your bathtub. If you come diving here in Saudi Arabia, they throw a prince in with a package. Yep. Count on it. I asked our host here what he does at night. He says he usually goes out with the guys, they watch DVDs or TV, maybe play little cars, or race rally cars. <laughs> this is the Jetta Raceway, and thanks to Mishad, we've scored VIP passes. Mishad, what kind of racing do you have here? Well, we actually carry out uh, about six types of events here. Uh, our main attraction is drag racing, quarter mile drag racing. Sweet. What, yes, kind, of, uh, what kind of cars? Uh, we have all types of cars, all the way up to pro mods, or pro modified cars. Uh, we also have autocross, which is the event that's taking place today. Uh, rally well, cross. What, what is autocross? Autocross is basically uh, going, testing the driver's skills in very short distances between cones. So it's not oh. a lot of top speed, but it's actually the driver's skills of, uh, right of here. driving. Yes, it starts here. Oh, so it's like with motorcycles, you go between the cones. Exactly. But it's oh. pretty much, it's a, it's a very technical track. So we can, we draw it out every single time we have an event. We get it, make it more and more difficult to get people to step up a little bit on their skills. That sounds yeah. like some fun. And it's very, so very fun. Now we're gonna get a chance to try some of this? Yes, you will. Yes, you will. Uh-oh. Excuse me, would you mind to come down here, please? Today's event is gonna have two rounds. Today's the first round and tomorrow is the second round. The first round is gonna give the chance for the racer to race and compete on the track. So we can elect 10 elapsed time for tomorrow's round. Okay? Okay, oh, I we'll love this, this helmet, yes. So you can, you know, wear your glasses. The hardest working guy out here. Look at this, it's unbelievable. Skid, handbrake, another handbrake, slide all the way around, up forward, skid, around, back around one more time. Unbelievable. Whoa! Yes! This is incredible. Jesus, you're a good driver. Fantastic. 
Congratulations. Have fun. Have fun. That was great. Yeah. I did a great job, I must admit. I coached him. You see that? I mean, each one of those corners coming at 60, 70 miles an hour, pulling the handbrake back, skidding it around, twice all the way around, back out again. A great driver, a lot of fun. Most of Saudi Arabia seems like desert, really hot, really humid, but we're now what's called the Asir region, which is very mountainous. We're driving to near the top of one of the biggest mountains in what you might call the Saudi Arabian Alps, uh, probably about 10,000 feet. The top here, if it clears off this ridge, we hope to be able to paraglide back down again. There's a whole team waiting for us up there. Look at this uh, <clears throat> takeoff zone this here. This is the fuel. Oh, here is the this. area that you can take off from, from here. You have your hang glider and you start running like running, this? Running, yes. And then? You just already <laughs> blind there. Ooh, and so this is do or die. That's yeah. it. And here you is either make this or not, right? Abdul Bari. Here we This is Abdul Bari. So Abdul Bari, you've done this before, yeah. have you? Yeah. A couple of times? Sorry? A lot, you've done this a lot? A little bit so, yeah. Yeah, a lot of, lot of time. Okay. You got a lot of wires to go bad there, huh? So how do you, how do you uh, control this? Okay, the control when we will, uh, I'm here now, to uh, pull the glider. Okay. Okay, then make the control by this one and this one. This one for this corner, and this okay. one for this side. And so if things go really bad, you've got a parachute, is that right? This one. In the Mushkala Kabir? Yes, open this one <laughs> for emergency. All right, see okay. what this looks like. Okay. That is pretty cool. Great morning here in Saudi Arabia. Where are we headed? We are going to Al Habala, the hanging village. And Habal, of course, in Arabic means rope. Rope, yes. So this is a village where people would use ropes to go up and down into the, into the village. Habala, or hanging village, is so named because of its unusual location. Built into the rock face, high above a verdant canyon, the ancient village of Havala was once reached only by a series of hand-woven ropes and treacherous footpaths. Now some of the village can be reached by cable car. However, the adventurous traveler can still get there the old-fashioned way. Down. So look, we can see behind where we started down there, yep. down in the gardens. It's a beautiful view. Beautiful view. Now, Mubarak, I want you to just show me where it was that people walked for centuries here. Down here, they came from here, and after they joined this, they climbed here. 
So this was the original climbing route here. Can you yes. imagine this? You had whole families who would walk up and down this probably 1,000 foot vertical climb, and this is what they came up. With. No protection, no yes. pitons, no crampons, no carabiners, no ropes. That's just they put a rope here. And they have a little rope. rope. Yeah, and you just use it in your hand. I'm one of the rope people. <laughs> You're one of the rope people. Yeah. One of the modern rope people, I guess so. <laughs> All right, let's not fall off on the way across here. Even with the help of modern climbing gear, the road to Havala is not for the faint of heart. This climb gives you an amazing respect for the Tahami people who lived out here on these terraces. And to think that you had climbing these vertical faces here, unaided, without any kind of ropes or carabiners, pregnant women, older men, and young children. Pretty incredible. For our next stop, Mubarak is eager to show off one of Saudi Arabia's best destinations for friction climbing. A technique that enables the climber to scale the rock face using his or her body weight and footwork rather than handholds. First rate granite. Uh, yes. Some of the best climbing in the world. World championships here, you think, in a couple of years? Inshallah, yes. Well, I should leave there now, though, right? It's closed. OK, we'll just throw it off, OK? So if he suddenly falls, I jam over like this and hold as hard as I can. I'll get pulled up a little bit, but maybe luck would stop his fall. You throw it? Got it. Not as easy as it looks. Wish you were here. Good, good, good. High five I'll tell you, there were a few places there that I didn't think I was going to go any further up. No handholds, no footholds. Just try to get that foot to kind of hold on and slip a little bit. And go, what do I do? My coach here, he just said, you can do it. It's a rare treat. This is a Saudi Air Force base here, which uh, Americans rarely get on. Hello, Hi. Hello. 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 Uh, expecting a smooth uh, flight. Welcome aboard. Uh, enjoy it. Thank you. And how many planes does the pilot come out and give you a personal briefing, especially when he's a lieutenant colonel in the Saudi Air Force? Now, when we met with Prince Sultan, who's the head of the Supreme Commission on Tourism, we asked him for some fun activities. So the big surprise last night was uh, they came up and said, well, we're taking you to an Air Force plane in the morning, flying you up to another Air Force base in the north about an hour and 45 minutes from here, and we're going to put you in fighter jets. Making good on his promise, Prince Sultan has arranged for me to go flying with Saudi Arabia's world-renowned Air Force aerobatic team, the Saudi Hawks. Quite a welcome. Boy, this is a great-looking suit, though. A little small. Oh, like this? You don't have to. You don't have to do it yet. Then bring them back. Yeah. But watch oh, this. That's great. This is the bus out to the flight line with the team leader here. 
uh, just uh, minutes away from getting out to the Hawks, where we'll board and where the team leader here will take them through an entire aerial demonstration. Should be really cool. Saudi Arabia's best adventure. Here's my wingman here, Razor, right? Yes. It's a tight fit. That's got to be some of the most fun flying you could possibly imagine. First the uh, the air show, four or five Gs up over on your back, and then out into the distance they are to really some of the most beautiful terrain in all of Saudi Arabia. Let's come back. Hey, thank you very much. How would you like that flyby? Is that pretty good? Excellent flight. All right, that was great. This is one hell of a pilot, i got to tell you. One of the best I've seen. Phenomenal maneuvers, great low altitude. Saudi Arabia is safe in your hands. Thank you. You're welcome. It would seem that a country where the most famous city, Mecca, is off limits to non-Muslims, where you can't sample the local wines or even buy a beer, would be a pretty tough sell as a tourist destination. But with world-class diving, climbing, and soaring, plus luxury shopping, five-star hotels, and jet fighter rides to boot, I guess you could say, I've been converted. <laughs>